In this video, we're going to take a look at UConn. They are back. It is clear after their win over Fort Hayes in the preseason exhibition game that they are definitely winning the national championship, as you can tell that off of one game. How is that for hyperbolic? No, but it was actually, in all seriousness, it was great to watch UConn play and finally see the players that we've been talking about hit the court. And to be honest, I, I thought most of the things that were being said by Gina Ori Emma in the preseason press conferences basically played out in the game. He was talking about in one of the press conferences how Paige Beckers just seems like she can get a shot and get a basket whenever she wants to. And that's the case. She just looks like a player in total control and just has the ball on a string and is just clearly a, an experienced, very experienced senior and a great player. And I'm just going to run down the players one by one, just quick hit takes on e each one. I'm not reading too much into it, but just basic initial takes, just getting back into UConn basketball. Sarah Strong, pretty much as delivered. When I watch her, she reminds me of Alyssa Thomas, like an Alyssa Thomas that can shoot. I think the key for her is she gets more comfortable. She'll just get better and better as her instincts take over. You can see they're already trying to get combos with her and Paige Beckers. There was a dribble handoff where she faked the handoff to Paige and then took the ball down the lane and then gave a, a nice dish for an open three-pointer. I think it was to Zabel, who couldn't hit it. And that, you can just see the future of that because teams are in all sorts. Do, do we hedge and try to stop Paige from getting to the basket? And then if you do, then Sarah Strong can basically punish you. The other thing, she showed a little bit when she was playing for Team USA, just the quick hands. She just gets her hands in and she's really strong at just picking at the ball and getting those loose turnovers and just good instincts. And she's she's big and she's quick. Looking at it on TV, it, it seemed like she's just as big as Ice Brady. Now, speaking of Ice Brady, up and down, she had some nice passes. It's just the, the question with Ice Brady, will she make that jump in, in year two? Everybody's hoping for it. Everybody says the right thing at the start of the season, and that's what you're hoping for. And for that to happen, she probably needs to get off to a better start. Gino talked about how her and Jana L. Alfie, they're so hard on themselves, and, and confidence can be an issue that they, they, they get in their heads too much. So you're hoping that she can have a few good games. So going for zero points wasn't great, but again, she had a few good passes. Extremely, extremely early, but to me, it looks like Jana, L. Alfie, and Ice Brady are going to share minutes, essentially. Like, Sarah Strong is going to get the majority of the minutes. Like, it's, it's quite clear you want Sarah Strong on the court. Now, speaking of Jana, L. Alfie, they'd been talking about in the preseason press conferences that she's like a bull in a china shop. And that's quite clear. She's just grabby and handsy and just over physical. She just needs to settle down a little bit. But the good thing is she moves well. Like I think she moves a lot better now despite the Achilles injury than she did at the World Championships that she played in for Egypt and the one she ultimately tore her Achilles. She looks like she's in good shape. She has good hands. And again, just as she gets more confidence it just gives UConn that interior presence inside. And I, I just think her and Ice Brady are going to share fouls. At one point during the game, he had Sarah Strong playing the five. And you can see that in the future for sure. If you're not aware, their other big, Yana Patterson, she's out with a shoulder injury. It sounds like an AC joint. Not sure, but she was in a sling. At the game, she wasn't, but the in, in one of the press conferences, Gina said that she'd been walking around in the sling, so I, I'm not sure what it is. It, hopefully, it doesn't sound like it's serious, but it's just another niggle that she continues to struggle with, which isn't, you know, obviously you want her on the court. Now, despite that injury, they have depth now. Like, I think you're going to see a lot of battles in terms of positions and how those play out. Like, I think Ashlyn Shade and Ali Zabel, they will fight for minutes. And right now, advantage Shade as she had a good game. Her shot was falling where Zabel couldn't hit a shot. I, I just think I, I see them as very similar. It seems like when I was looking at it, it seemed like Zabel had a little bit more size on her. And it'll be interesting to see if, if Zabel becomes more consistent. That's that's what Zabel is selling on herself is that over time that she is just consistent all the way around where shade could be streaky but it, it, at this stage it appears she's just building on the season that she had last year then obviously the other battle is caitlin chin and kk arnold 
Chin, Chin was good. She had one bad pass where she threw like a cross court pass, but otherwise she's experienced, obviously experienced, and that's what they're looking for her to be an experienced point guard, basically taking the Nico mule role, and she seems quite capable of doing that. KK Arnold's out as she sprained her foot, but it appears she's recovering well. Gino expects her to be fully ready to go by the end of the week for the next game, so that that's good to hear. And I think they're their battle will be interesting because KK brings some different things in terms of does have potential to be a better on-ball defender than Caitlin Chin has the experience, which is obviously valuable. So I, that'll be a fun battle for minutes, and I think it'll be good. I, I just don't see very often Chin and KK playing on the court at the same time, as I think Gino really likes having some big guards, and, and to that end, Cadence Samuels, Gina has been saying in the interviews that she's getting on the boards a little bit and, and just she's had two good solid weeks of practice and it looks that way. Her her defense looks a little bit better. Like there was one play where she played good defense uh, and, and had a good shot. But then on the other end, like the player took a shot and she didn't block out. So it's those little small things. But I think that would be really, really big if UConn could get Cadence into the rotation because they really need a big guard in Morgan Shelley, with her status, she just continues to have different little niggles. And I guess the concerning thing is that was in high school as well. So I believe it was she had a stress reaction in high school. And then she had a hamstring. And now I think it's a, a groin that's giving her issues. So will that continue? Hopefully not. Uh, the other one, the other big guard option is Aubrey Griffin, but that looks like Aubrey Griffin will be back in early January, it looks like. And man, if, if they do get Griffin back, then it really sets them up quite well to go big. Because that was one of the things that stood out was the way that they can switch at times. And with the big guards, that would just make them even more deadly if they can switch one through five. Unfortunately, Caroline Descharm, her status is just really unclear. Like, she's still not doing contact. So until she does contact, uh, again, it goes without saying, everybody wishes the best for Caroline Descharm more than basketball, just in life in general. But it would be good because that's what she wants to do is play basketball. It would be great if she could get on the court, but you just don't know. The concussions is such a tough injury. And then AZ Fudd, that's the other one. Everybody's hope is that AZ Fudd could get out there healthy if she did, my God. With Sarah Strong and Paige Backers, that would be unbelievable. But I know everybody's really concerned about even dreaming that for AZ Fudd, that she would be those moments of brilliance, that she could be that over a season as you feel like almost like Charlie Brown with Lucy pulling the ball once you get excited. And, and Gina's talking her up in, in the media session saying that she looks good. She, she looks good and close to ready. It sounds like she's waiting for AZ to make the call when AZ feels ready, like she's practicing. And when, when she says, yeah, I'm ready to go, she'll be back and building up and having full-on contact. Again, I think it'll be a few weeks away. But overall, that is what sticks out with UConn is just how many different parts and toys that Gina Oriyama has to play with and will put together, and it's just really exciting. I can't wait to track what lineups are the most effective and what players win or get the majority of the playing time. It's just going to be fun to watch. Anyway, your thoughts, your comments, any takeaways you had from the game. Are you excited about Sarah Strong after watching her play? Like I am, do you see a little bit of Alicia Thomas in her game? Uh, your thoughts, your comments, it's all welcome. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night.